G'day folks and welcome to this unboxing of Heroes of Might and Magic 3 The Board Game. Uh, this is uh, this was a result of a Kickstarter campaign. It has just arrived uh, in the post uh, yesterday for me, so I've cracked it open. As you can see, there are sort of two big boxes with eight, yeah, seven different game boxes. Here's the base game and various expansions and stretch goal boxes, and this is I think an FAQ guide. Um, I'm going to do an unboxing of the base game today. We might see what else we have, and I'll give you a sort of a, sample, a sense of what's in the other boxes. This is the Grail Pledge from the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, it was 169 euros, and it consists of the core game, various stretch goals, the battlefield expansion, the fortress expansion, and the rampart expansion. Um, and as you can see, also contains sort of boxes of stretch goals. So board, this is the base game, the Rampart expansion, the Fortress expansion, the Battlefield expansion, and these, these, these three boxes alone are the stretch goals. So yeah, those who got on the campaign are getting a lot of extra value for, for backing this. Now this is a design by Camille Bielkowski and Jacob Oleksik. Um, it was published by Archon Studio, technically 2023, but it's really just coming out to backers now. This is the board game version of a PC game. Um, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 was published in 1999. It is the third title in a seven title series. They were publishing these up until 2015 when, when Heroes of Might and Magic 7 came out. But certainly I think Heroes of Might and Magic 3 was one of the best. It's the one that I played a lot back in 99, 2000. <laughs> I remember vividly trying to get friends together to, um, to play this game. It was a turn-based PC game um, where, yeah, you play as sort of a, uh, a hero in a town and you explore this map and you eventually come across um, other people and neutral powers and you fight on this battlefield. You recruit units, you upgrade your town. Um, yeah, so it's kind of a, a exploration, almost a 4X type of game. Explore, um, a lot of it is exploring with your hero, moving around this map and encountering various things on the map. The game, the board game. Okay, so I have seen some playthroughs. I have seen uh, the sample rule books. So I have a good sense of how this all plays out. The board game has sort of taken these ideas and it's almost ported them to board game mechanics. Um, so this is effectively a car almost a card driven game. Um, you will have a deck of cards that you will be building and you'll draw at the start of the turn your hand of cards which you'll use to attack or cast spells or defend against enemy attacks and all these kind of things. You will have your units with you um, based on, okay, so you'll start the game picking a character with a town that goes with that character, with the models that go with that character, and your units are associated with your town. As you upgrade your town throughout the course of the game by spending resources, you'll upgrade your units available to you, you'll take those units with you, and you'll fight battles against neutral units or enemy forces. That's pretty much, that, that the description of those mechanics is the same as the PC game. You have a character, a town, you upgrade the town, you get better units, you use those units to fight war battles, basically. The battle system is, the combat system in this is, is really quite straightforward, but um, has some, you know, a, a good dose of tactical choice. In terms of the type of units that you can bring, in terms of their special abilities, and in terms of how you use them on quite a finite um, sort of battlefield layout. So, first of all, box is really nicely designed, um, a textured cover, really nice box art. As we crack this open for the first time, very carefully, and I'll put that aside, we can see the rule book on top. Now, there are several different ways, several different ways to play this game. Um, and let me see, because in the sample, here we go, game modes, yep, this is very similar to the sample rule book I saw. Clash mode, fully competitive, two to three. Campaign, single player mode, facing off against an enemy AI. 
Alliance, a 2v2 team, two two team-based format, or co-op, cooperative game for two to three players where everyone shares the same goal. So four different ways to play this, plus, based on the way you play it, you may encounter, well, the campaign has a campaign, the mission book has different scenarios that you can set up. Uh, every scenario has different um, has different victory conditions set up. It'll be a different experience. You can see here, I'll just quickly flick through this. Brave New World, Clash Mode. This is Clash Mode all for one, three player scenario with different setup and different buildings and different rules and different victory conditions. Here's a co-op mode, um, another co-op mode mission. This is a cooperative mode quest and the setup to this. I'm just we're very quickly flicking through this and here are the campaign rules. Um, so yeah, several different ways to play this game. That's just in the base game. The expansions effectively add additional mission books with many additional missions to sort of add to the gameplay experience. Uh, the tournament book, I don't know much about. This is the tournament rules and scenarios for one-on-one -on -one games. Very interesting, so more scenarios, tournament mode, scenario last chance for two players, a scenario creator, and there you go. So many different ways to play um, this game. I'm gonna run you through the rule book before I get to the components to kind of show you what this looks like and what you're getting. So town boards and your heroes, they're connected and they are connected also to your hero cards and the type of units you will have access to. As I mentioned, this is sort of a deck building game. You'll build your deck of, uh, of, of resources and effects, which can consist of artifacts and spell cards and specialty cards and statistics cards that you'll seek to build and enhance over time. Um, there are various tokens that you can see come with the game, some of these resources such as gold, building materials and valuables, which you'll use to upgrade the buildings in your town to give you access to, usually, um, more powerful units. Build tokens, population tokens, damage tokens for use in combat, paralysis, def uh, paralysis defense and spell tokens, movement tokens to track your movement, morale tokens which you can use um, to on your, on your turn often to re-roll dice, grail tokens and acrylic cubes to track things. Um, here is a map of the game setup. So this is what it will look like. And you can see this is the sort of exploration board in particular. So you will set this up and gradually explore these tiles, uncovering new tiles. Now for those of you who are familiar with Mage Knight, the visual aesthetic here is very reminiscent. You'll see those tiles in just a moment, but it does look a lot like Mage Knight in the sense that you're exploring these sort of hex-based tiles themselves consisting of seven individual smaller hexes that you move across and encountering different types of locations with different effects. Everything I've said there is very reminiscent of, of Mage Knight. Even the deck building aspect is somewhat reminiscing of, reminiscent of Mage Knight, but the combat mechanism is, is very different. Um, combat takes place on a full battle board with variable setup where your units actually sit on this battle board and fight it out on a sort of grid-like um, layout. And this is your town down here, which you can upgrade via these buildings. This is your character board with, um, yeah, your special abilities. Details on setup, details on the round order, details on your hero. So you will pick a hero, they will have sort of a starting hand and special abilities, and this is your experience or level tracker along the bottom. As you kill um, enemy units, you will gain experience, which gains you, um, gives you access to additional cards and a greater hand size, thus enhancing your capabilities. So you can see here level effects here, greater hand size, capabilities and the like. Rules around general deck building and ability stats, artifact cards, spell cards. Um, basically, they, they're used during combat to do damage or protect you or do have various effects. And you can power them up by usually by playing um, power cards to enhance their strength. A little summary on the resources. The three main resources are shown here. Gold, building materials and valuables, as I explained, which are used in your town to... Uh, upgrade your, your dwellings. Your dwellings allow you to recruit units. Citadel allows you to reinforce your unit cards. Mage Guild, you can purchase spells. Faction buildings have unique effects depending on your faction. Again, every, every faction uh, and character has a suite of different resources. So it'll be a different experience depending on sort of who you are playing in what town, what faction, uh, and the type of board that you're exploring. 
um, a summary of the different map elements and the map location. So again, this is kind of reminiscent of, of what Mage Knight looks like. You can visit the windmill to gain a, a valuable, you can visit the water wheel to gain gold, things like that. Um, more advanced locations, your hero gains that, things like <laughs> gain a positive morale token, gain an additional movement point, variable effects depending on the scenario. So lots of different locations to visit on these maps. Then we get to the unit summary, and this is what the units look like. So in the base game, you have these decks of cards with your units, and your units are sort of mostly tied to your faction, but you may be able to secure neutral units as well. And they look like this, and they have an attack strength, a defense strength, a life value, or, or hit points, and an initiative rating. And it's really straightforward. The, the units with the highest initiative go first. They can move, um, there's three different types of, of units, but generally they'll move, they'll attack, um, you can play cards to add to their attack value, then you roll a die, um, and that's sort of like a randomizer, which can modify your strength by negative one, zero, or plus one, and you compare that to the opponent's um, defense and hit points, and effectively you're trying to kill that opposing, opposing unit, um, or inflict hits on them for the larger units. And uh, yeah, killing those units off if they're uh, at the same level as you or a higher level, gains you experience. That's so a really straightforward combat mechanic. Um, okay, here's the combat rules. It um, runs for about four pages, but really it is, it is quite straightforward, easy to understand, nothing, nothing um, overly complicated, but it does give you a degree of tactical sort of flexibility and, and decision making on that, that battle board. Okay, the rules for player versus AI, if you're playing with AI, game settings, difficulty, victory conditions, um, trading, and an index. So it's a 38, 39, 40 page rulebook, but um, look, it is, I would say it's a, on the lighter side of moderate complexity. Um, it, it's, um, yeah, fairly, I, I found it just in looking through playthroughs, a fairly easy great game to grasp the basics. There are player aid cards, summarizing the combat round steps, the actions you can take, and the round steps. Then we have the punch out boards and one, two, three, four, five of these. Um, and again, this is very reminiscent of, of Mage Knight, the, the hex based tiles. It, even the art looks very similar to Mage Knight. The Roman numerals here shows the level of enemy forces that you may encounter. All of these are various locations that you can visit across the map. So I'll quickly flick through these to give you a look. Really nice art, it looks really cool. Um, different sort of uh, environmental themes. And these are the characters. So you've got sort of their name, what they are, their sort of um, broader role, starting hand and special cards that they get, their offense, their specialty, uh, sorry, their, their specialty card and their particular um, ability and their double sided. So there's sort of different characters on each side. These, this is the combat board. So this is basically where combat takes place and you'll t place your unit cards, sort of set them up here. Um, and yeah, you'll move your cards sort of orthogonally across these areas to, to move adjacent to enemy forces to then attack them with your combat strength compared to the enemy's defensive strength and aim to destroy those forces. Um, but there are sort of various as I mentioned, three different types of units. There's ground units, flying units, and ranged movements, all with different movement and attack characteristics. Um, there may be obstacles in the way. Um, units have special abilities, which will modify this as well. Um, and yeah, basically you're trying to build up a force to enhance your ability to come to combat. Here are your town boards, and these look really nice. These are double layered. Um, these will need to be sort of punched out very carefully, which I'll do that later on, not in a hurry. Um, we have got, so a castle, necropolis, and dungeon. So three different types of buildings um, with different uh, effects and, yeah, as I said, units to unlock. And um, I'm kind of tempted just to try and, yep, it comes out pretty easily. So you can see here the Mage's Guild cost to build it. And once you've built it, it unlocks the Mage's Guild ability, when built, search twice. After built, once per turn, you can spend six coins to search for two spells. So really cool. 
let's just check out this one. This is the Citadel. It costs that much to build and when built, it unlocks reinforcing units. Um, these are our, so this, this sort of, I think there's three different levels of units, bronze, silver, and gold. This is a silver unit. So once you've unlocked this, it unlocks the holy grounds, which will give you access to a certain type of unit. Um, so they're the three types of towns. Um, this looks like a turn tracker. These are the base miniatures that come with the game, just representing uh, the your hero, basically, on the board. So really nice production there. And then uh, other resources. So we have the, 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 the cubes, these are the, the dice, this is the randomizer, this is for resource gathering. You'll encounter various um, locations where you can acquire resources by rolling those dice. These, this is a lot of cards for the core game. Um, and these will be, well, here I can see some of the units. So let's crack open these units and I'll kind of show you what these look like. So these will go on the battle board. Here, for example, are black dragons. Um, very strong, good defense, high life point and high initiative. And you can upgrade those from a black dragon to a pack of black dragons and they become stronger, tougher, higher initiative and so forth. So lots of different types of units. You can see here, halberdiers, marksmen, griffins, crusaders, zealots, champions, archangels, skeletons, zombies, wraiths, vampires, liches, dread knights, Ghost dragons, then we have troglodytes, harpies, evil eyes, medusas, minotaurs, manticores, and black dragons. Uh, so they are the types of base units in the base game. The expansions, which I'll kind of touch on in just a moment, add to, add to those. A whole new suite of units, new heroes, new factions, new towns. I won't go through these decks, but basically they are, these are the decks that you're building. These are the cards for the decks that you're building, showing sort of, here's an example of an offensive card, and that is a prayer or a, looks like a type of spell card. That can go there. So that's the base game. Um, if, you just, if you've jumped in at base level, that is um, what you are getting in the base game. It all seems to come back into the box quite nicely. There's the punch cards, there's the rules, tournament book and mission book. That is the base game. Okay, so as I mentioned, stretch goals. And I'll kind of talk about, so this is the tower expansion and stretch goals. So the tower expansion, uh, new faction, um, looks like an icy titans, nagas, gremlins. I won't open this right now. Um, some additional resource dice. So we have one mission book. All right, so another suite of new scenarios, player aid, 15 new map tiles, a town board. So a new town board, two new hero models, seven new unit models, seven double-sided, seven double-sided hero cards. So there may be seven new heroes in this. 117 other various cards. I'm assuming a lot of those will be for deck building. 54 tokens and 30 acrylic cubes. That is the tower expansion. This is the uh, stretch goals props and neutral units. So we have in here 15 new unit models, seven town models, 10 map elements, treasure chest, grail, hourglass, campfire. So they can kind of go on those locations and 90 token replacements. So these are replacements for the building materials, the valuables um, and morale tokens. So this is really just, these are the stretch goals and aesthetic addition to the game. Uh, probably not necessary at all, but um, yeah, adding to, <laughs> adding to uh, the plastic. And the aesthetic. Okay, just closing that so the sun and glare isn't shining too badly. Okay, then we have more stretch goals. These are the faction units. And we have in this um, seven castle unit models, 
seven dungeon unit models, seven necropolis unit models. Okay, so these are actually model. Okay, I understand this. So I mentioned that the cards are placed on the battle board and the cards move around. You can use these units instead of the cards or on top of the cards if you wish. Uh, again, aesthetic purposes, not at all required, just gives you that bit of plastic <laughs> to, uh, to go on the battle board. If you'd like to see units on the battle board instead of the cards. I reiterate, not necessary at all, not required, and in fact, I would suggest um, that the, I mean, the, the actual information on combat statistics is all on the cards. Pure aesthetic. Okay, this is the interesting battlefield expansion. So this takes the battle board and it says, okay, you want something more than just a battle board? How about a hex-based battle grid? It takes the battle board and, and transposes it to a much larger grid with terrain and features and complicates that whole process. So there is a battlefield rulebook, two battlefield player aid sheets, one battlefield combat board, 70 cards and 11 other various tokens. So if after some time you are sick of that battle map and feel that combat is too simple for you, you can transfer to the battlefield expansion. The Fortress expansion gives you mainly a new um, town board. Okay, so I can't really see the town board, but this is, we have a new mission book, so more new scenarios, a player aid, seven new map tiles, a town board, two new hero models, seven unit models, one double-sided hero card, so there'll be two new heroes, 78 various cards, 23 tokens, and 30 acrylic cubes. So again, adding to uh, your experience. It looks like a kind of lizard folk, uh, reptilian type of domain. There are dragons and various other types of uh, lizards, a hydra dragon and various lizard people. Um, and it looks like a kind of uh, Aztec uh, themed world um, based on what I can see on that, that art. That is the fortress expansion. And finally, we have the Rampart expansion. Very similar. A new mission book, a player aid, seven new map tiles, one town board, two new hero models, seven new unit models, a double-sided hero card, 69 various other cards, 23 tokens, and 30 acrylic cubes. Um, this looks like a wood folk. Uh, yeah, I guess a wood folk. You've got a treant type unit, a unicorn, a Pegasus, it looks like a range, it almost looks like a ranger and a dwarf, um, a green dragon, the power of the forest, basically. Um, yes, uni unicorns, pegasi, centaur, centaurs, okay, it's a centaur, there we go. So again, this is another faction you can play, two new heroes um, and new terrain tiles. So, again, this is all within the Grail Pledge, and this was the this came on top of the box. This is the astrologer's answer. This seems to be a, an FAQ guide for understanding the game. So you get quite a lot. This is um, quite a lot of content for just that Grail Pledge. There's already enough, uh, quite a lot in a base game, and then with this pledge, you come with all these expansions as well. Um, so I've already my son's already looked at this. He's keen to try it out. Um, Keen to check this out, folks. Uh, it's gonna be difficult to get a playthrough, but um, I'll see what I can do. Thanks everyone for watching and take care.